Hey y'all, Kelly here. Welcome to my world. Um, so today I wanted to share with you guys denial. Not the river in Egypt. Not the Nile, but denial. Um, I was here, I, I, I live in a house, I live in a two-story home. And the other day I was going down the stairs and we are in the midst of our rainy season and it's mean to joints. You know, if you've got uh, joint issues, then you know that when it gets damp outside, the joints start having the party. And I have been trying to take a walk around my community every morning and I pretty much say, if my hips are talking, then we are walking. So I can deal with the pain, if you will, in my hips. But for several days, my hips, my back, my knees, my ankle, and even a couple of my toes had the audacity to get in on the, on the party. And I was going down the stairs and I was taking the steps one at a time, kind of like a toddler. And about four or five steps in, I literally thought to myself, if someone were here with you, would they think that you were being melodramatic? Then I thought about that thought. And I was like, you by your damn self, really? Like you think you faking and you by yourself and you worried about somebody else thinking that you faking, but you by yourself. This is like your reality. Like right now, your body is in a state where one step at a time is what is necessary. And I had to really look at um, some of the things that we are told by ourselves, because there well, nobody here putting that thought in my head, and what we are also told by society, what we are told by our doctors when they're trying to diagnose us. Um, and I really had to think about the pressures, if you will, that I put on myself to perform things, perform duties that I really don't have any business performing. And a lot of that comes from what has been ingrained in our minds. So if you're like me and you had a healthy life, a normal life, so to speak, as they call it, uh, prior to getting your diagnosis, those memories are fresh. I, I mean, I, I've talked about this in so many different videos where I share that I am a former two-time national level fitness competitor. And now I can't hardly walk across a room without getting winded and needing to ha have a seat and taking steps one at a time. And those memories of running obstacle courses and, you know, climbing cargo nets, those are very fresh in my mind as if, you know, I feel like, oh, you could do it. You're just not pushing hard enough. Well, that's a form of denial. Because first of all, not only have things changed, but girl, I'm 50. Ain't nobody over here trying to climb no damn cargo nets right now. I'm trying to make sure I don't break no hips. <laughs> you know, so I thought that I would share some things that might be helpful, I hope, to some of you if you are um, beating yourself up in a similar way uh, or if society is beating you up or your doctors because again there are a lot of people who um, as their body started aching and hurting and the fatigue was setting in uh, and the doctors couldn't figure them out they were told well this is psychological it's all in your head um, and it was because they couldn't figure it out. And just so you all know, you could check this on, um, I believe it's lupus.org. It takes on average between uh, seven to 10 years for them to diagnose lupus. It used to be five to seven. Sadly, that number has uh, gone up. And so that's a long time for somebody to be suffering a lot of the symptoms that we endure without a diagnosis. And I gotta tell you, for me, when I was trying to get my diagnosis with all the things that were going on with my body, fortunately, my doctors didn't tell me that it was all in my head because they could see, you know, your heart's swelling up, that's not in your head. You know, so they could see things happening, they just couldn't explain it. And not having a name for it was its own brand of torture. So when we find a name for it and then we start denying it, that's not necessarily healthy for us either. So the first thing I want to tell you is you have to know when to stop. And that's a challenge for me. You know, I mentioned again, being a former fitness competitor and I want to push, you know, I'm like, I could do this. Like, you know, going down the stairs, I was like, you can go down these. 
I guess my camera decided it was done too because it just stopped right in the middle of my thought. But anyway, as I was saying, I was telling myself, you can go down these stairs and, <clears throat> at, you know, the regular way. But guys, I live in a house with, and I'll put the link above somewhere um, to show you all if you want to see a tour of my house. I live in a house, first of all, my stairs are concrete and I ain't got a handrail in sight. So if I start tumbling down these stairs, my bony behind is not going to end well. Y'all won't see me no more because I'll be a done deal because I'll be all, I'll be like Humpty Dumpty. They, won't be not, they will not be able to put my bony ass back together again. So, um, so you have to know when to stop and recognize your limitations. So if I had tried to take the stairs in the normal way that day, it really could have caused me problems because what if my hips had given out? What if my knees had given out? And what if I had become Humpty Dumpty? So you have to know when to stop um, and stop trying to prove yourself to people that are outside of what you're dealing with. Okay, so you also have to know when to take the victory lap. And for many people, you know, I keep talking about my fitness uh, background because I feel like it's a good comparison to then and now, so to speak. And people can relate, I think, to being able to exercise vigorously and now screeching hard. You cannot. Um, and so one of my goals is to walk my neighborhood every morning, if at all possible. But anyway, so this morning I got up and I sprayed on my mosquitoes stay the hell off me spray and I went for a walk and my neighborhood is not that big we're not talking a thousand miles and probably I think my little pedometer said by the time I got back here I'd done something like 1600 steps or something you know ridiculously low for those of you that's trying to get them 10,000 steps in and when I got back here oh y'all had to sit down I was winded I was like oh that was a good walk I'm gonna call that a victory it wasn't running obstacle courses. It wasn't climbing cargo nets or six foot walls or any of that. But now with what my body is able to do, we're going to call that a victory. So we need to learn how to be nicer to ourselves where we are, not where we were. We can't compare where we were. Um, you have to look at where you are and take those victories where you can. So the next thing I want to share with you guys is to know when to cry and to mourn the loss. So sometimes you just got to get them ugly cries in. And, you know, again, coming from a, a, a life where I was a whirlwind, um, I was nicknamed, as many of you guys see, the, the name of the channel is actually Hurricane and Heels, if you type it in. Um, I had I was dubbed a hurricane, a force of nature, because I was always on the go, always on the move, always doing something. And now I can't do, you know, most of what it was. I can't I can't keep up with somebody like me now. You know, I just couldn't. And that's sad to me, you know, when I realize that I have these limitations and if I try to really push myself beyond those limitations, that's where uh, days in the bed happen. That's when hospital stays happen. You know, so after four years, I've kind of figured out some things, no matter how bad you want to do them, they're just not going to happen. And you have to mourn that loss, uh, accept that those things are no longer going to be a part of your life. And it doesn't matter how much you loved them. It doesn't matter how much you enjoyed them. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with you sitting down and having a good cry about it. So, you know, get those emotions out. Feel what you feel and do what you need to do about it. The other thing uh, that we need to do is we need to realize when our thoughts are counterproductive. So I shared with you guys, you know, the going down the stairs and the thought that I had that, you know, are you being melodramatic? And there was nobody here, so who am I putting on the drama for? Who am I pretending for, so to speak? So because of being here alone, um, I had to really question that thought. And it was a counterproductive thought. It was a thought that would have made me, had I not checked it, it would have made me put myself in danger. 
because had I not checked it, I'd have been like, yeah, you probably are. And I would have started trying to go down the stairs the normal way. And again, I already mentioned, if I started doing that and something gave out, I was going to be Humpty Dumpty around these parts, you know? And so we really have to ask ourselves about the thoughts that we have, that, that where we beat ourselves up, where we tell ourselves we're making a mountain out of a molehill, when really it is an actual mountain. Um, and so I think that we need to learn what thoughts are really good for us and what thoughts are bad for us. Because it's hard to check other people on what they're saying to you um, when you can't check yourself. So check yourself. Okay. So the other thing <clears throat> that... I want you to realize in this process of denial is everything matters. And let me tell you what I mean by that. When I first got sick, I joined all these support groups and somebody would say, oh my gosh, my fingernail fell off and it's that because of lupus. And I was like, girl, come on now. Everything ain't got nothing to do with lupus. My God, you just broke a fingernail. Well, over the years, Number one, I, start, I, start, I learned how to mind my business, y'all, first of all. Um, but the other part of that is I realized in things that have happened in my body that because lupus can attack everything, that even those little things can actually turn into big things. And I'll, I'll give you another example. Um, I, you know, I've talked about to, to several of you guys that um, I've never smoked a day in my life, but I have a lung disease courtesy of lupus. When I first started coughing, I lived in Chiang Mai, Thailand. The air quality was crap because they burned the rice fields and, you know, the pollution was really bad. And initially I wasn't wearing a proper mask. And so I thought, oh, you know, it's just a cough. It'll clear up when the air quality clears up. Well, guess what? It didn't. It has turned into an actual freaking nightmare for me, and it tortures me every single day. Um, you know, so if you are concerned about it, talk to your healthcare provider about it because, you know, there are people who their joints get so bad that they have to have surgery on their hands. So, you know, Frailty in your fingernails could very well be one of the first symptoms, especially if you got, like I got fingernails, y'all, I could just literally cut stuff with. I mean, like my fingernails are strong as all get out. And if all of a sudden they became weak and brittle and bendy, there's something else going on that's at a deeper level. So um, that's what I mean, that everything is important. Don't deny that things are changing in your body and talk to your healthcare providers about those. They may not be able to do anything about it. You might have just broke a fingernail, but better safe than sorry is what I say. All right, and the last thing, and this to me is really, really important. Acknowledge that this is not just physical. And it took me a minute to realize, like I was like, I got this, I'm tough. Y'all had to get a therapist because there are so many changes and they're consistently, constantly, always changing. And this thing will mess with your mind. Again, you know, most of this talking about just denial, that is messing with your mind, you know, wishing that you could do the things that you used to be able to do and telling yourself you're making more out of it. That's a mental place, you know, and we need to realize that lupus is not just something that limits us physically. And the, the best example that I can give of, and, and I think a lot of people now will truly be able to relate to this, the pandemic. There was fear all over the place. People were, at first they were like, oh, masks don't help. And now they're beating each other up because they're out and they don't have on a mask. Um, they're washing their hands to the point where their hands are raw. Some folk pouring bleach in their bath. I mean, like, it, it, it's, it's a lot. But imagine they're, they're living a temporary moment, or those of you that are watching that aren't battling your body every day, you're living in a temporary moment where what you are experiencing, the fear that you have of your body shutting down and being attacked by this unknown thing, 
We live with that every day. We don't know what's going to happen next. We just know we got a new symptom and now we got to go to the doctor. You know, I started off, I had lupus and good lungs. Now I got lupus and crap lungs. You know, I started out, I had lupus and a good heart. And my heart is still good, thank goodness. But the, the sad thing is, is that the lining around my heart has swelled up so many times that I already know what they're going to do for it. I already know what the, what the, the, uh, the diagnosis is going to be before I even get to the doctor. I tell them, hey, you know, we're dealing with some uh, another bout of pericarditis. Like I done got to where I'm speaking medical terminology. Okay, so you have to realize that this thing is more than physical. And don't be ashamed to join a support group. Don't be ashamed to get a therapist and help you to deal with the mental portions of this um, and even the spiritual things because a lot of us have, you know, our spirituality has, has changed, if you will, over the course of this thing. So this thing does a lot of different things outside of just beating you up physically. So if you have not subscribed, I won't beat you up physically because I ain't got the strength for that. And that's just mean anyway. Anyhow, uh, so if you haven't hit the subscribe button, I do ask that you do that. If you think this information is helpful, I mean, I think that I can't say that what I'm feeling goes across many autoimmune diseases, but I believe it might. I could be wrong. So if you know someone that is battling their body, um, please feel free to share this with them. I really do appreciate that. And, you know, give me the thumbs up, like my, my uh, channel. This is how you support me. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys next go around. Have an amazing week. Ciao.